with Mark Scarpelli, owner and GM of Raymond Chevrolet and Kia in Antioch, Illinois. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for having me. Thank you. How are you doing today? Doing great. Good, good. First of all, Mark, thank you for taking the time to speak to us today. And before we get started, uh, would you just give us a little background of you, uh, yourself, and your family business, and, and how you got started? Well, this is a, a 45 a year old Chevrolet dealership. We recently acquired uh, the Kia Motors franchise about three years ago. Okay. Uh, I have been involved in in the automobile business since probably the age of 15. 15, that's pretty young. Uh, yeah, that's I'm a second young. generation dealer okay. and uh, I started back in the service department, sat in a bunch of seats, <laughs> service writer, body shop, salesperson, um, you know, then became a manager on the floor, right. an F&I manager. Right. Um, recently, I was the chairman of the Chicago Auto Show, okay. uh, the Chicago Automobile Trade Association, as well as the chairman of the board for that organization for uh, nine years. Chairman, I served as two years. Pretty so my entire life, I've been involved in the automobile industry. I also, out of college, worked for General Motors Corporation okay. for two years. I uh, was in Boston, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. as well as Lansing, Michigan. Wow. So my whole career is centered around the automobile right. business. Your father... Uh Mr. Scarpelli Sr. is a very well-known uh, person in the industry. Uh, when did he start the dealership? My, my dad started here at the dealership in 1964. Okay. We were in, in downtown Antioch at a small city store right. and then migrated out to our current location in 1972. So he's been here uh, a lot of years. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, Mark, when you were first approached with the idea of developing a BDC process, how did that go about? How did it start? Well, I, I will tell you, for a lot of years before we uh, got together, right. we had um, always hoped and dreamed, frankly, of having a, a staff uh, call our customers and uh, make sure that uh, their needs and, and wants were fulfilled. Sure. Uh, for many, many years, if, if you had been in the automobile industry, right. salespeople would, we'd ask salespeople to call our customers and sure. make sure that they can help and right. the answer, standard answer would be, sure. yes boss, we'll call them, no problem, they're coming in tomorrow. Right. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't, and uh, in many cases, a lot of times people didn't show up. So we saw a need and a want for a professional staff to come in and, and really their only purpose right. was to secure and maintain that our customers are happy, right. as well as secure appointments and make sure that we had consistent uh, floor traffic, which we have achieved. And that was your initial vision? Absolutely. Okay. And how does that compare to where you are two and a half years later? Well, two and a half years later, uh, we have been able to have economies of scale. We've been able to cut back our advertising budget right. a little bit. Could you give me a percentage, maybe? Uh, Craig, I would say that we probably have cut our advertising budget back 15%, 15%. 10 to 15%. Um, likewise, you know, that staff that's back there. Uh, calling and securing appointments and, and making sure that our customers sat are satisfied from a customer satisfaction index, sure. also calling for service appointments. They really are providing floor traffic and traffic overall to the dealership. It has been a wonderful thing. It really has. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Mark, is it important for a dealership to hire a BDC consultant? And, and, and let me expound on that a little bit. The reason I ask that because uh, as a consultant, we've talked to various dealers that try to do it on their own, and they've had varying success, successes. Is it important for a, a dealership to hire someone who knows what they're doing? Well, I, I'm glad you asked the question. Frankly, we knew we were, we were signing up with, with your company, right. but two or three months before you guys arrived, we ran our own BDC. Yes. And uh, we had all the best intentions, but we ran aground with people to call, lack of scripts, yes. correct ways mm -hmm. to set appointments, um, you know, make sure appointments uh, came to our dealership. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've lived it, and it just it, it did not go well. Having a consultant mm -hmm. or a uh, consulting firm come into our store to help us uh, secure appointments and make sure that it, it's it's running properly is. Uh, no question is is a need is a must. It has to happen. Then then tell me this: What do you think the qualifications of a strong BDC consultant are? Well, in our case, you know we've uh, we're dealing with Owner Connect, and 
and from from my perspective, Owner Connect embodies um, a uh, complete uh, BDC consultant company from A to Z. They come in, they uh, they have come in and helped us hire uh, both management and uh, callers on a consistent basis. Um, it, it if I could use the the term turnkey. Um, that's, a good, that's a good term. They have been very beneficial in making sure that our BDC uh, runs almost without hitch. And if we have issues, they have consultants, they have managers who will come in and uh, smooth over a rough spot or two, which has happened. Mm -hmm. um, they really have been uh, world class for us. Good. Speaking of rough spots, uh, tell me what have been a few of the lows. Well, um, you know, uh, initially, be nice. <laughs> <clears throat> initially, you know, from our perspective, right. we, we had a um, increase in expense, and I'll qualify that for you. Right. You know, we've got an entire department now that we're staffing for management as well as callers, and we were not used to that additional expense. Right. But the additional spend, expense for us, so that would have been a rough spot. Right. But the additional expense has given us more floor traffic. Right. We've been able to cut down some of our advertising expenses. So if I look at it on a, on a grand scale or economies of scale, uh, at the end of the day, our exposure or expense have, has gone down, our floor traffic has gone up, gone up, and frankly, our sales have gone way up. How does the sales staff relate to the process? Well, the, our, all of our sales staff are trained here, so they right. know what we need to do, but they love the process because it makes them, first of all, it gets them more sales because right. it draws a lot more people in there, right. but uh, they're, they're, they're ready to go when the customer comes in here. They right. know the product very well, so mm -hmm. basically it just uh, helps them sell cars. So it helps them. So they, they're, the BDC is actually like their assistant. Absolutely. So if there's a customer they can't get in touch with, the BDC will contact 100%. you. 100%. Right. 100%. Right. And you've been uh, at other dealerships where they don't have BDCs. Correct. Tough, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't I wouldn't have any dealership without a BDC center. It's basically, if you have that, then you're missing out on a lot of deals. Thanks a lot, Mark. Some of the highs that we have uh, reached with our consulting company as well as our, our business development center, um, we consistently uh, rank 40% or better. We track it in closing ratios, um, making sure that our people are coming in, um, our appointment ratios are way up, and frankly, the, the more appointments that are set and the more closing ratios, obviously our sales will go up. So. I attribute uh, direct success to our business development center and appointment setting and closing ratios directly to the BDC. So, so the BDC is giving you some structure as far as tracking those. Before, would you have tracked that information that closely or was it sort of out there in nowhere land and you just sort of wondered where those things were? You know, Craig, we, we did track it. I will tell you, we don't we didn't track it nearly as close as we do now. Right. Um, you know, we, we've got we've got skin in it, both of us, the uh, owner connect as well as management, of course, right. that we want to make sure that the expense is justified and that it's it's uh, paying a return. So we keep very, very tight control, very good track of what we do here. Right. And I've got to tell you, it's um, it's been wonderful. Mark, tell me how important a BDC manager is to your organization. Um, our current BDC manager is, is kind of the backbone of, of what we do here. You know, uh, he or she, our, ours is a he, right. but he is, uh, is making sure that uh, that department is run efficiently, um, that our callers are, are in tune, in tune with scripts. And uh, basically um, telling them the flavor of the dealership, the flavor of the area in which we do right. business with, and making sure that uh, they're doing something that are within my wishes as an owner right. and um, achieving those goals, and, and they do that. Good. How many uh, average appointments does your BDC generate on like on a Saturday? Um, you know, we typically are anywhere from 80 to 110 uh, appointments that are set for a Saturday. Okay. All right. And then the weekdays? Weekdays were probably 25 to, to 40. 25 to 40. So you have a constant flow. Your salespeople understand that the BDC is going to generate opportunities for them. 
one thing I want to ask you about is I know that Owner Connect has a unique way of handling customers when they come in. Would you tell me a little bit about the VIP process and how that works? That, that has been um, a unique perspective. Uh, when we started with uh, Owner Connect, they installed a VIP process. And essentially what it is is when the caller or the BDC manager set and confirm an appointment, they'll ask uh, the customer to come in and ask for Mark Scarpelli. Right. If I were the BDC caller or exactly. BDC manager, and ask, uh, ask for Mark Scarpelli, he's the VIP manager. Right. Essentially when that customer comes in, it's a, it's a normal floor up for the salesperson. Sure. The salesperson ident uh, notifies the business development center that individual will come out and say, hi, I'm Mark Scarpelli, welcome to Raymond Kia, right. Raymond Chevrolet, I'm the VIP manager, we appreciate you coming. The customer have a, has a sense of, of knowing somebody on the inside. Right. They, it's, a sense, it's a calming sense for them. They feel as though that they're, um, they've got a, a friend in the business. And uh, it really is a great perspective uh, for our, our salespeople as well as customers. Uh, they seem to embrace this and and really like it. Wonderful. Uh, any words of recommendation for other dealers who might consider installing a BDC? Well, you know, I, I did want to touch on one thing. We were talking about the VIP manager right. and the process. Sure. Um, we're a 45-year-old dealership. I've got salespeople at our store that have been here uh, many over 20 years. Um, they have done business a certain way. Um, they've logged their customers on their paper log or they kept track in a cue card file and they right. did it a certain way for many, many years. Sure. Uh, they had great apprehension when I uh, told them that Owner Connect was going to come in, the BDC department, Business Development Center is going to handle their customer. Right. They were very apprehensive that somebody's going to be taking care of their customer. Sure. Well, their customer is is all of our customers, of course, and, sure. and we would uh, want nothing more than to treat them uh, properly and ethically. Um, they were concerned about their customer base and their commissions, and right. rightfully so. Um, so that, if I could say that was a little bit of a rough spot, it sure. definitely was exactly. a rough spot. On the other hand, now that we've been uh, doing it quite some time, these folks love it. They have a sales assistant right. who set appointments for their customers. Right. Uh, the BDC lets them know when their customer is coming in. So it's it's been a wonderful thing. So um, as a dealer, you may hear that. You may get some pushback from management as well as salespeople. Uh, believe me, it, um, it, it goes away. And the salespeople and the managers who are doubters become believers very shortly. Because sure. it works. Okay. Let me ask a follow-up question to that. Mark, you spend X amount of dollars a month on advertisement. Before you had a BDC, were there any worries about what's going to happen when that person is on the phone or goes to the internet and how that lead is going to be handled? Absolutely. Right. Do you have them now? No, we don't. We don't have a concern now. Right. The, the 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 caller right. is is well positioned to answer an internet lead, right. a sales lead, a service lead. A customer concern. Um, Owner Connect has been able to uh, tie that all together, and if if this uh, issue occurs, this is the way a caller you should handle that. Right, right. It uh, they really have handled all the concerns. Uh, again, uh, <clears throat> would you ever consider removing your BDC? Uh, I can't see doing business without it. Uh, I think it would be a, a throwback to 10 years to ago. 10 years ago. Um, I think it would be a foolish move on our part. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add uh, to the people out there that uh, might make them understand that it's a process and the process, and, and I might want to add this, that uh, the process works because you, your managers, <clears throat> and your salespeople understand that you have to make a change if you want to get to another direction. Right. Would you agree with that? I, I would agree, and I also would reiterate and expound on it a little bit, and you bring up a good point. We, we, ha we have to be believers in our business, what we do. Right. And as the saying goes, it, it starts from the top down. If, if you, the dealer, believe and want to make a change and m make a, uh, a basic change in the way that you do your business, right. you will be successful. If, if there are one or two non-believers in your team, uh, then maybe it's not right for you. Right. 
But uh, as they say, if, if you're a believer and uh, invest time, energy, and of course resources, it definitely will work for you. Your managers need to be on the same page. And um, it, it definitely has made a, a difference in our business and definitely would not go without it. Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank you.